and welcome once again to EWTN's Bookmark. I'm Doug Keck, your host. Our guests are Marie Oates, one of the editors, along with Jane Record, one of the contributors to the book Women of Opus Dei, In Their Own Words, published by Crossroad Publishing. Welcome, Marie, to EWTN. Thank you, Doug. And you as well. Thank Great you. to have you here. And we're talking about a book called Women of Opus Dei, In Their Own Words. Well, let's talk first about the whole idea of Opus Dei. People hear Opus Dei, they know it has something to do with the church. At different times they've heard it in the secular press because of different more secular books that talked about it. Uh, what is Opus Dei? Opus Dei is an institution of the Catholic Church. It, it, it seeks to serve the church as the church wants to be served, but its, its special mission is to help laity find God in their ordinary in their ordinary life, in their work. Mm -hmm. Now, you were one of the editors of the book, right? Yes. So how long did it take for this book to be put together? Um, probably about a year, maybe a little bit over a year. And were you one of the people who came up with the idea of doing this book? Yes. Okay. I did. Okay. Now, let me ask you, uh, Jane, about mm -hmm. this. A lot of times, my good friend, Father C. John McCloskey, mm -hmm. from Opus Dei Priest, yes. Uh, always made the point to us whenever we talk about, I talk about marriage encounter, which I was involved in, or Curcio and things like that, and he'd say, and I'd say, well, those are lay ecclesial movements like Opus Dei, and he'd say, no, 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 Opus Dei is a personal prelature. What is a personal prelature? Well, the prelature means that it's, it's organized around a prelate. Our prelate is Bishop Echeverria, and we, it, it's very similar to how, um, um, the church is organized with m with the military that we aren't organized around a geographical area we're organized around our person our prelate and um, that is how the the organization is set up mm -hmm. so uh, that's a good example I hadn't thought of it that way Marie the idea of kind of like the military archdiocese yeah. is yeah. okay right. mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of it and, and even the, it, the it has to do more prelate. with persons okay. than mm -hmm. which is what you're right. saying than geographical right. So it's, yeah, it's organized to serve persons, a group of persons. Now, uh, Opus Dei, people know about it. Here's a book that's specifically about the women of Opus Dei. And it seems to be in reading the book that there was a deliberate attempt to hear the voices, as you say in the title, in their own words in a sense, the voices of the women of Opus Dei. Why was it important to emphasize the women of Opus Dei? I, I think it was important... Uh, Within the context of what was going on when we conceived the idea of the book, the, the movie, The Da Vinci Code, was released in the book. And, of course, that was uh, uh, an incredible distortion of, of Jesus Christ, of the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. and of Opus Dei. And, and I, I thought, well, with respect to Opus Dei, I found it particularly um, upsetting that even as the author distorted what Opus Dei is, he didn't even include women to distort them. I mean, they only show <laughs> up in like one scene. Right. So I'm like, where are we? Where, you know, where are the women? Uh, that's not the only reason, but I, I just thought, gosh, the women have no voice. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it would be good to help people understand that women are, you know, 50%, if not more, right. than the total membership well, of Opus Dei. Well, that's what I read in the book, mm -hmm. Jane, that it said mm -hmm. that internationally it's 50%. Is that about the same percentage or a little more than that in the United States? Is that similar or less? I think it's less? similar. Okay. It's very similar, yeah. So do you mm -hmm. find that people are surprised when they f I, I have to admit, I think I was a little surprised to realize that, that uh, it would be 50-50 like that. Oh, I don't think that there's any reason to, because the message of Opus Dei is equally accessible to mm -hmm. men or women. It's The message of Opus Dei is that... We're, Opus Dei gives practical help to the lay people, mm -hmm. men and women, to help them to find God and love God in their lives, mm -hmm. in, in their work, uh, in their relationships with their family and their friends. And that's something th that's equally accessible to men and women. And that ties so, into the name, Opus Dei, yeah, right? the work of God. The work Absolutely. of God. Now, let me ask you, you're a convert, yes. right? Yes. So, uh, when you came into the church, was it because of dealing with other people you knew who were involved with Opus Dei, or did you come into the church and then find Opus Dei? Um, it, I came into the church because I met my husband, and he was a member of Opus Dei, and I, I, could, I didn't really know what that meant, but I knew that he was a really very Catholic guy, and I didn't want to be shut out of that part of his life, and so I, I started exploring the, the faith on, on that, uh, with that beginning, and um, everything I learned about 
the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. I learned through Opus Dei, through priests of, of the work. And once I became a Catholic, mm -hmm. I really, I, I found a lot of fulfillment in what I had learned, and I continued learning and went on, and I became a member of Opus Dei. Okay. Now, Marie, in, in, in the stories that, are, that populate this book, how did you go about assembling the ones that are included? Some of them are kind of like uh, essays. Some of them are actually like virtually interviews. Um, did you pre-select who you were going to include? Did you have an open call to various members, women in Opus Dei, to say submit articles or ideas? How did, it, how did you go about getting this book? I worked with some of the, the leadership, the women who serve in the leadership capacity for Opus Dei in the United States, and I spoke with them. I suggested people. They suggested people, and we wanted to come up with what we considered sort of a, a, a genuine cross-sampling of you know, what, who, uh, you know, there's no typical mm -hmm. woman of Opus Dei, there's no typical man of Opus Dei, but we wanted to give diversity, basically. And so people were suggested. I would contact them, ask them, are you, you know, are you willing to do this? Certainly it's, I think it's very generous of people like Jane and the other women who are in the book. They really open mm -hmm. themselves up and they share often intimate details mm -hmm. of their life and how they love God and how they find God, how they struggle with their defects, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that was sort of the process. Mm -hmm. Now, in the forward, uh, written by uh, Susan Mengels, I hope mm -hmm. I said her name, president of Lexington College in Chicago, she notes that the women in this book appear content with and well-versed in their faith. I'd even say they come across as in love and passionate about it. Given some of the difficulties the Catholic Church has faced in recent years, some may find this fidelity and excitement about one's faith striking, perhaps even oxymoronic. Mm. I mean, how do you find that, Marie, in the sense of you're living your faith and all of stuff that's going on that we read in the headlines of the church, not about Opus Dei, about mm -hmm. other things happening in the church, the sex abuse scandal, et cetera. How does that impact people who know maybe your commitment to Opus Dei in the church? Well, I, I, I'm from Massachusetts. Uh, so, of course, when the scandal broke out in Massachusetts back in 2000, 2001, 2002, I remember being at first quite uncomfortable, and of course, it's 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 disappointing that offenses like this have occurred. Um, and but I soon found when I went out with my friends, and they knew I was a devout Catholic, that they were talking to me more than ever before about the Catholic Church, and they too were disturbed. Often they weren't practicing, or they were far from the church. And this was now an opportunity for them to talk. So at first I thought, this is unsettling. And, and then I realized, no, this is a huge opportunity mm -hmm. um, to talk about what the church really is, that it's a gift from God and that um, there, it's always been staffed by sinners. I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. The Pope's a sinner. We're all, and we have to work at holiness. We have to work and struggle to be holy. And Certainly, that's the message of Catholicism, and that's what Opus Dei exists to further that, that message. Mm -hmm. Now, Jane, mm -hmm. in your experience in, in dealing with Opus Dei uh, and, and meeting your husband and, and, and that, when you became involved, yeah. was there anything that surprised you about uh, the spirituality of Opus Dei? Um, I, I really really valued the freedom. St. Jose Maria really emphasized freedom. And that we... And he's the saint who founded yeah, Opus Dei. Right? Yeah. And, and that was something that really appealed to me and I felt helped Opus Dei to fit into my life because I had freedom in deciding how it was going to fit and how I could use it to help me. Now, somebody might say, yeah. they'd be surprised you'd say freedom because okay. they would think, oh, Opus Dei, you know, it's an, an organization and they're they're telling people how to live their lives and in fact Opus Dei has like a women's group and a men's group and it's kind of separated mm -hmm. and, and from the outside it looks like it might be rigid but you're saying it's freeing. Oh it's so freeing. Um, it's so freeing. One of the things, okay, so Opus Dei, I, I value Opus Dei because it's very practical. My background is in engineering and I think in terms of practical things. I want to have practical help on how to live my faith and Opus Dei has really given me that. And one of the very practical things that Opus Dei gives us is um, teaches you the value of having a plan for living your life, a plan for, for um, spending time with God, a plan for, for uh, going to Mass and to do some, spend some time in mental prayer and reading. And what St. Jose Maria would say is that that plan needs to fit us like a glove. Mm -hmm. 
and the glove everybody's glove is different and and some days that some days of the week the glove may be different some days the thumb is on your thumb some days the thumb is over here but you you adjust the glove to fit some day your all thumbs, yes but, yes uh, right. it's true <laughs> but but you adjust the glove to fit your life so there's <coughs> infinite freedom in that in in taking one spirit and adjusting it to fit my life mm -hmm. Now, in, in reading through what Barbara Kay, columnist for the National Post, who mm -hmm. uh, writes in the preface here, made some interesting uh, points about Opus Dei, uh, where he kind of talking about it being organic. Hmm. What does she mean organic? Sounds like whole foods. Right, yeah, right. I mean, it's very popular organic. Though. In what way organic? Well, I'm not quite sure. Barbara, of course, is an agnostic right. Jew, so I'm not quite sure what she means by organic. I think in, in, in Opus Dei, when we think of organic, we think of being grafted to the vine of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, you know, mm -hmm. through the sacraments, through, um, you know, yeah, in the church right. and being a part of the church. Yeah, it seems that she was kind of, in, from what I was reading here, Opus Dei is... Uh, purpose in microcosm is the bedrock of an authentic Jewish life as well, meaning the, the whole idea that it's all-encompassing, kind of what you were just saying a minute, oh, minute ago, Jane, mm -hmm. that idea that it's not compartmentalization, right? right? And that's mm -hmm. St. Jose mm -hmm. Maria yes. Escriva mm -hmm. as well, which is it's sometimes as Catholics, unfortunately, I think, we could t tend to s treat it like, well, we go to Mass on Sunday, and that's what we do on Sunday, and then we go back to our regular right. life right. during the week, but that's not the message of mm -hmm. Opus Dei, and I guess that's kind of how she's relating to right. it, right? So perhaps what she's talking about is this uh, idea of unity of life, which St. Jose Maria mm -hmm. talked about a lot and encouraged people in Opus Dei and people mm -hmm. who come to activities of Opus Dei to, to strive to live where they don't live a double life, that they're not just, right. you know, Catholics when they go to Mass on Sunday, but that they're Catholics 24-7, that mm -hmm. they're trying to always have Jesus Christ front and center in everything that they do in their work, in their relationships, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And certainly, Opus Dei strives to help people right. to to live that way of life. Right, really an integrated mm -hmm. life. And she, and I, she must have some, in her experiences, maybe that she's experienced that. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Now, also, this, this <coughs> ties back to what you were saying there, Jane, a few mm -hmm. minutes ago. What Opus Dei knows is that internal liberty and external structure within those boundaries free will can be most effectively galvanized, work together to promote the optimal environment for healthy self-realization. So again, that kind of what seems counterintuitive or as if it runs against itself, the idea of internal liberty and external structure. Exactly, exactly. And, and again, the freedom is really the freedom to custom build your own spiritual life, custom build your path to God. And in that way, that is accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, it says here in the introduction that mm -hmm. Opus Dei is dedicated to helping lay men and women throughout the world find and love God through their daily work and social interactions and to spread the Christian message in and through their, their daily lives. Let me, let me ask you, uh, Marie, in the sense of Opus Dei, it's really uh, a, a lay movement in the sense of that it's mostly lay people, though it's not a movement technically. And also, uh, but... Sometimes when people, I mean, I knew Father McCloskey, he's a priest, <coughs> but I was surprised to find out that they're really Opus Dei priests, per se. There aren't a lot of them, right? Right. I mean, it's vast majority of people are lay men and lay women, right? That's correct. The, the, I think the, there's about 88 to 89,000 members of Opus Dei worldwide. Two percent are priests. Um, and, the, the, of course, that's the whole idea of Opus Dei. It is... <coughs> to help the laity find mm. and love Jesus Christ throughout their days. So the priests, we cherish our priests in Opus Dei, and we're so grateful mm. the priesthood is a gift from Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's all about the laity. And right. the priests, of course, exist to serve um, in this right. way, to help the laity remember, you know, to, to love God in their ordinary things. And am I correct in understanding that usually the priests are called from members who are already in Opus Dei, in a yeah, sense? Yeah, they're, they're, they're laymen who usually have been working themselves and, um, and are asked to be mm -hmm. priests. I mean, they, obviously they have to see that, yes, I'm called to do this.